last week on The Slut Show. That's literal proof of the fact that if you go on a diet, you're gonna gain everything back yeah. and more. Every crash diet, my mom is low income, and if I have to decide between spending 6,000 euros hmm. or get pregnant for free... That's not weird, that is poverty. <laughs> it's poverty. Yeah. I never had a great relationship with the police, but now it feels like even more dangerous as it is. For me, it's very important to be softer, uh, right. because black masculinity is also very criminalized. Not at if all. you think that a fat person not eating is healthy, you need to check your own eating patterns because that shit's fucked up. Yeah, yeah. If I saw a trans person, I always say it was or a dead sex worker in CSI or like a punchline in like Sex in the City or something right. weird like that. I became super fucking hairy. <laughs> Also oh. the butt region. And they were like, okay, well, you're not suffering enough for us because you're so cool with your body and so cool with the idea of pregnancy. This week on The Slut Show. Oh, shit. <laughs> we haven't even gotten to this. So we had a threesome. What's his name? What's Hello? his name? <laughs> I don't know his name. What's his name? And he, he couldn't get it up. <laughs> drug. Did you begin experimenting with anal play because of the vaginismus? I don't really like really big dick. I've had one and... Whoa. I've been meaning to call you about that. You fucked my bed from the wall. <laughs> you Nay. Yeah, you did. No. We were drunk at six. Yeah. We were drunk at six. There was this point where she was sucking his dick and I was sitting on his face and he wasn't getting it hard. And you know, when that's the point you're at, you tried. At one point I went full out and she Yeah. You liked it? Yeah. <laughs> How old were you when you started masturbating? We had discussed before they were coming <laughs> that if we weren't feeling either of our men, that, that we would just, you know, have a threesome. With. We just share. <laughs> we would just share. You know, yeah. sharing is caring. You ready? Are you ready, spaghetti? Cool. <laughs> Three, two, one. Hey you, thank you so much for listening. No matter when you are listening, no matter where you are, get comfortable. Get yourself a cup of tea, a glass, or an entire bottle of wine. Maybe smoke a blunt, get under a blanket, grab yourself some popcorn, and enjoy this week's episode of The Slut Show with Ellen Moore. Ladies, gentlemen, non-binary beans, and any and everyone in between, I am so excited for today's episode. Welcome to a brand new episode of The Slut Show. My name is Ellen Moore, and today in the studio with me is my plus-size sex bomb, the queen of kink, BDSM-loving boss babe, my beloved friend, Jeska. I'm so excited Hi. to have you. Thank you for having me. How are you? I'm fine. Really busy, but... It's, it's hot in here. Mm. I, I personally wanted to borrow this jacket, so I'm going to regret this, but... Yeah, you will. Probably. Yeah. Thank you for letting me borrow it, though. <laughs> I am so excited to get into all the goods today. Um, we're going to be talking about PCOS, about vaginismus, BDSM, fetishes, kinks, weight, self-love, confidence, uh, and way more. But before we're going to dive into all of that... The Slut Show with Ellen Moore, the podcast slash talk show about shit you and I have to deal with on a daily base. About feminism, insecurities, feeling like a bomb ass bitch, and obviously about loads of sex. Enjoy your weekly dose of empowerment. Your weekly dose of empowerment. What is the most empowering thing you did lately? Um, I bought a bikini. Oh, nice. <laughs> I'm always wearing a swimsuit, just mm -hmm. a one piece. And I was like, yeah. I'm going on vacation, it's 2021, so good. you can go and I bought a bikini. Awesome, and congrats really on good. that. So, yeah. That's so good. What what color? I'd love to see uh, it. I have a white one with black dots Ooh, cute. and uh, a black top nice. with a lot of boobs. Ooh, nice. we love boobs at the Slut Show. <laughs> <laughs> no Slut Show without slutty science, so let's dive right into it. I got some slutty science for you because we like to stick to facts. Slutty science with Ellen Moore. Vestibulodynia, dyspareunia, genitopelvic pain penetration disorder, or more commonly referred to as vaginismus. This medical condition makes it hard for vagina owners to have penetrative sex. But how does that exactly work? Vaginismus is the involuntary contraction of muscles surrounding the entrance to the vagina. The muscles in that area are incredibly strong, as those muscles are also biologically built to be able to birth a child. They can also, however, lock up so tightly that a finger, tampon, or even a Q-tip cannot enter, let alone a penis. There are two main types of vaginismus. Primary vaginismus refers to something a patient has had their entire lives. 
Secondary vaginismus is when somebody was at some point comfortable with penetration, but trauma or other reasons brought on the vaginismus later in life. The condition is relatively unknown among both sufferers and practitioners, even though it's been estimated that it affects 5 to 17% of vagina owners. The exact percentage is hard to find, as this is a topic surrounded by incredible amounts of taboo and stigma. Diagnoses are made based on genital examination in order to exclude physical dysfunction, but more importantly, it is based upon psychosexual history and the degrees of distress, anxiety, and self-reported interference with penetration one experiences. In Arab Muslim societies, vaginismus forms the most frequent cause of a sexless marriage and infertility. Cognitive behavioral therapy has been proven to be effective, but the cultural context of this very common problem should not be denied. Two common denominators were found in patients from this particular cultural context. On one hand, excessive closeness of family members, which can add pressure to a couple, was found to be a deteriorating factor. On the other hand, strict education, which highly values virginity, transmits fear of the male and sex in general, and additionally links sex with pain, were found to form the biggest problem. Therefore, proper sex education, especially in Arab Muslim societies, is of vital importance in the prevention of vaginismus developments later on in life. In that same cultural context, the integration of family, not just the partner, into the treatment process proved uniquely beneficial for the patients. Therefore, breaking the taboos, stereotypes and stigmas that surround vaginismus is essential. The treatment for vaginismus can consist of a variety of different strategies. One of the physical strategies used to minimize symptoms is the insertion of so-called vaginal trainers, which gradually increase size to eventually achieve penetrative intercourse. Focusing on the psychological aspect is, however, far more important and oftentimes also far more beneficial. Additionally, I'd like to make one thing very, very clear. Vaginismus is not something women make up to try and get out of having sex. Even though the condition results from psychological issues, it is a very serious physical condition. It is important to note that it is not possible to decide when your muscles in that area lock up. It happens. And when it does, you're obliged to deal with it. And I guess that's, that's the truth. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's really annoying. How old were you when you first experienced a vaginismus-like symptom? Five years ago. How old are you now? 26. So I was right. 21, 20, something like that. Yeah, it kind of came by some sort of trauma because he was always pushing when I didn't want it and uh, it repeated itself and um, at one point I I just broke and also I got my IUD before I had sex and they pushed the fucking plastic thing in your vagina and right it hurts <laughs> getting so, an iud place is not fun no do you have one right now yeah and i have to get a change this year yeah my iud replace like placement was fucking traumatic as well <laughs> replacement is worse <laughs> <laughs> taking it out is is not no i'm just keeping it in for as long as i can and then taking it out and never putting anything up again when did the vaginismus become so bad that you could not have normal sex anymore right let me rephrase that real quick it's not so much a matter of normal versus abnormal sex rather it's a matter of penetrative versus non-penetrative sex so in this particular scenario what i meant to say was when the vaginismus becomes so bad you were no longer able to have penetrative sex like you were used to when was it such a big obstacle in your sex life it was basically every time uh, because he was a very sexual person and uh i was just scared because i know it's gonna hurt when uh, we have sex right so um every time we tried i was scared so it um it got worse every time mm -hmm. and at one point i didn't want to be touched by him i don't I didn't want to be hugged or something so because you were just afraid that he would yeah because he always pushed uh my boundaries it was really triggering and 
Right. Not a really fun uh, experience. That is ridiculously toxic, and I, I, I love you so much, and, like, you're a super close friend of mine, and so when you say that he's a good person, I would really like to say that I think he's an asshole for pushing her boundaries, just saying. Yeah. Um. So I know that you never, yeah, you would never talk trash about anyone, because <laughs> that's just a person you are, but if True. you push someone's boundaries, you're a fucking cunt. Just want to make that very clear. Um. <laughs> and so nice, he yeah. should have never done that to you, so yeah. that's why, like... I, yeah, it's fucked. It's yeah. fucked. What right now, when when it happens, when it occurs, do you feel like you're able to pinpoint what triggers it? Not really. It just happens and uh, it, it, it goes the wrong way and then it hurts and right. then uh, I panic and I'll start crying and then you have mm-hmm. to explain to someone, uh, yeah, I have vaginismus and right. do you know what it is? Because a lot of guys don't know, even, don't even know what it is. <laughs> And yeah, they try to be nice. Of they are trying to be nice, but it's right. it's weird because they don't know what it is, and yeah. And they want sex, so yeah, so it, it fucks up the vibe. How yeah. do you keep your sex life fun? Um, because you have a very fun and juicy sex life. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, a lot of toys, but it depends on the person. Right. How many toys do you have? The dildo, the satisfier, the the big ass one we bought together. Yeah. <laughs> um, a butt plug. The diamond one. Oh, then I have to then see, <laughs> see, see. Yeah. Okay, yeah, the bigger one, and I do need to get, need to get a new dildo. So okay. Hey, to... companies uh, sponsoring. Sponsor us. Send one over. <laughs> Did you begin experimenting with anal play because of the vaginismus? Actually, we started doing anal when I was really fucking drunk at Seagat. <laughs> In the showers. What? what? <laughs> and the people next to us were also fucking. <laughs> I love that. Yeah, it was a really weird situation, but yeah. So was that some random person you were hooking no, up with? No, that was oh, my, that was my ex. Okay. But well, you began experimenting by going full strength, the whole D up the ass? Yeah. Shit! What? <laughs> I don't know how I did it. But was it nice? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so wow. We were so drunk. I and see. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, it's good that it was nice, though. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, a good way to start. I guess, yeah. Did it? It didn't leave you any hemorrhoids or anything. No. Good. <laughs> good. So, is it now something that you you initiate yourself, or is it something that partners kind of you know see if you're open to it? I'm not really doing it often. Okay. There was one guy I we were uh, experimenting with everything, mm-hmm. and I f- also feel felt really. Um, comfortable with him so we just tried everything and also anal and uh we started using the the butt plugs while having sex so nice but most of the time i don't do it what adds for you when you use a butt plug during sex what makes it better uh it's just because I, I, I have a very hard time I, 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 like envisioning it it's full (laughs) i've heard this before (laughs) that the sensation of it being full is nice i don't know it's weird but it's yeah, it's really fun to have a butt plug in and then do doggy style because his body pushes oh. against the the butt plug. So. Okay, yes, I can. Okay, but then how big is the butt plug? How big are we talking? Uh, wait, the small, the diamond one is like, wait, uh, wait, it's thick, isn't it? Yeah, it's like this in, Woo! and the other one is a little bit bigger. Woo! Yeah, woman. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. So um okay okay that is impressive i i'm i'm like i don't uh, anal and ellen are just not a good combo no, I like ibs and do you want to try it ibs but you can uh you can cl- clean it before how do you do, do you anal douche no but a friend okay. of mine does okay yeah i don't know how you do it but just sit on the toilet and stick it in and yeah, you suppose like <laughs> what Philip said on the first episode oh, of season yeah. two. Check that one out. Um, he just screws the uh, the shower head off and he just sticks it up his ass. Oh. <laughs> and he was like, "Don't like make sure the shower isn't hot because you will burn your ass." Uh, I think it's a very brave way of d- douching. Uh, yeah, you also have just a uh, kind of balloon with a uh, yeah, the kind of. Yeah. Yeah, one of those. <laughs> you just press it and it comes. Yeah, in. yeah it's an anal douche. Yeah. yeah. 
Okay, so, but, um, yeah, well, you know, the thing is, there was one person where I was like, if I were to want to try it, I would want to try it with you, but then his dick was way too big, so. Yeah. Yeah. And no, it won't work. <laughs> right. Is there for you, is a bigger dick always a trigger for vaginismus? Yeah, sometimes, because it okay. also hurts when, um, first of all, getting in, mm -hmm. inside, because it's, yeah, it's bigger and... Of course. Uh, but also because I have an IUD, when it's too big, it just pushes up against the IUD right. and hurts like hell. Is there certain positions where you feel it more? Uh, doggy style. Same, 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 yeah. same. Oh my god. Yeah, so that, that's really painful. But yeah, I don't really like really big dick. See, now this is interesting. We've yeah, had you do. We have had yeah. many conversations about yeah. this. <laughs> Because I do. Yeah, no, I, I've, I've had one and whoa, it's just way I, too big. I love me some big dick. Um, yeah, well, I... <laughs> this this woman knows everything about my sex life. And I, I kid you not when I say everything, I mean like everything. So she knows my current partners, my previous partners. She's seen the list. She's... Oh, shit. <laughs> we haven't even gotten to this. So we had a threesome. Yeah. <laughs> She's been added to the list. Um, oh, oh my god, I yeah, low-key forgot we that we were going to discuss this. Yeah, oh my god. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Was... Okay, so we are both bi, pan, whatever you want to call it. And um, I've always said that I would do her. So yeah, that... you always want to date me. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't news. So, um, okay, how did this construction happen? Uh, first of all, you're never going to make my drinks again. <laughs> Because I was blackout drunk. <laughs> she, it was consensual. Just yeah, wanna, it was consensual. It was yeah. consensual. <laughs> Just going to get this straight. Yeah. Uh, but we started at like 4 p.m. Uh, with <sighs> drinking. So we were drunk at like 7. Uh, we where? were drunk at 6. Yeah. We were drunk at 6. And we decided, okay, who can we call? Because we want to have a really weird... We just wanted to have sex. Yeah. 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 So I knew a guy from Amsterdam and I uh, texted him and he was like, yeah, okay, I'm, I'm coming over. Yeah, fine. Yeah. And so I was swiping on Tinder like, fuck, yeah. who, can I, who can I get over right now? Right now? Right now? Yeah. Yeah. And so uh, I, oh God. Yeah. Oh, the guy. Did you, did you speak to him again after it? I didn't. Oh no. Um, I, I'm not ignoring him or anything and just... Mm -hmm. I don't really. I don't have his phone number. I don't <laughs> really. Don't have, oh, no, no, was, I don't. I don't think I. Do you know his name? Oh my god, this is horrible. No, I don't. I, I, I'm I the know worst. Uh, I was standing on your balcony and oh. <laughs> <laughs> and we were looking. Oh my god, is he? Is he there? He's bald. He's bald. But <laughs> look, look, he. Oh my god. I yeah. I believe it was right on time. The doorbell rang. I said hello and I didn't hear anything. So no, no, no. Oh. Yeah, no, no. I said hello, and then I didn't hear anything, so I put it back on. Because I'm always scared that there's going to be people who I didn't invite for some, you know. <laughs> traumas, honey! It's the traumas! <laughs> Don't want you here. So we were looking outside of the... Uh, we were standing on the balcony that is, like, uh, from which you can see my front door. And so we were hanging over, and I was like, there's a bold dude in front of the door. Is that him? <laughs> Because what's his name? What's hello? his name? I don't know his name. What's his name? <laughs> and then you, because you were you were by that point shit faced. Yeah. You screamed his name, whatever it was. Uh, let's let's call him Fritz. Fritz. So she went like Fritz, <laughs> and she and he was like, hey. And so we were like, oh okay. I was like, can you ring again? Um. And so we rang. He rang again. He came upstairs. Then. Um, your booty call came over and um, but he also didn't drink and we were <sighs> shit faced so we're just not on the same level listen I am like if you don't drink good for you I support it I am very happy that you don't drink I'm gr glad that you don't destroy not your me. body like like the way we do but we were you know we had it we wanted to have a party and we wanted yeah. to get drunk and we were just in that mood yeah um, yeah and <laughs> And he was so sober. Drunk. He was sober. Oh. <laughs> and I don't know. There was just not a sexual tension between me and him. Great guy. Just no yeah. sexual tension. And we had discussed before they were coming <laughs> that if we weren't feeling either of our men, that, that we would just, you know, have a threesome. With. We just share. <laughs> we would just share. You know, sharing yeah. is caring. 
Yeah, and then the uh, yeah. And then you disappeared with your guy to tell him what the plan was. <laughs> no, uh, yeah, I was saying to him, okay, uh, he's a nice guy, but it's not. We're not feeling him, so we're just gonna say we're going to bed, and so. Right. Yeah. You came back from the book, and you were like, "Ha! Ah, I think we're gonna go to sleep." <laughs> really oh no <laughs> and i was like no i think that's a good idea <laughs> no i don't know oh god it was very embarrassing yeah and the next thing i know we were having sex <laughs> yeah and he, he couldn't get it up <laughs> some drugs <laughs> oh my god he, he youtube please don't demonetize me i would really 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 not appreciate that he used cocaine um don't do drugs, kids. Uh, <laughs> and he used well, apparently enough so that he couldn't get it up. No. Uh, so it took very long, and you know we're hot. So there was this point where she was sucking his dick, and I was sitting on his face, and he wasn't getting it hard. And you know when that's the point you're at, you tried. Yeah. No, it didn't work. And then you were just like, "Okay, guys, I'm going to bed. Bye." <laughs> <laughs> we have been trying for like 45 minutes. Solid. Yeah. Solid. Like, you know, first on the couch, then in my my two bed, two people bed with three, and so you know we were we were really trying, yeah, and we we were there for it. We wanted to you know get it on. But it didn't work. I think he was just too nervous about the fact that there were two hot chicks naked I think so. into it. We did have sex later in the other bed. Yeah. Uh, Three times. She, <laughs> yeah. So at one point I was like, you know, I'm over it. I'm got. Hello, it's I've been trying. I'm I'm running out of time. Yoo Hello, you who is it? Woohoo! Can we get it up? No, we couldn't. Okay, so then I was just like, uh, hey, feel free to continue, but uh, can my you uh, can you? This is my bed. Can you leave? Thank you. And so you you first went to the couch, and then I heard ding 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 ding, and then you went to the other bedroom. Yeah, I fell off the stairs because the, the you you have the the little uh, tin cans tin cans under it, and I was standing on the stairs and then just flipped under. Oh fuck! So I was hanging there really naked. <laughs> oh, that's why. Oh shit! Yeah. Because that's I've been meaning to call you about that. You fucked my bed from the wall. You, they, yeah, you did. No. You detached it from the wall with the, with the sex, and now there is this big of a hole in my wall. <laughs> Nobody else has slept in that bed besides the two of you. <laughs> <I'm> sorry. <laughs> so that happened. Oh, fuck. When did you get into BDSM, kinks, fetishes? Uh, I don't know. I think I always been like that but i think most of the part when i was experimenting with my now best friend uh right we because we were trying everything yeah and, uh then i got into it and now i'm just like yeah i do like uh, to be spanked right how old were you when you started masturbating i think it was pretty young young how old is pretty young i was like 11 so yes yeah, same right i don't know a lot of Shower women who head. <laughs> was my best friend. <laughs> I uh, how did it start for me? Oh, oh shit! I um actually discussed this in detail in the first episode of the season, so check it out. It's linked up somewhere in the screen. I shot it together with Kaya. Um, it was about our first times, first time masturbating, doing drugs, first time everything. So check that one out. Um, but the short summary is, I found porn. <laughs> Oh, do you remember uh, the size Spiel Island or something like that? Yeah. When you would go way down, there were sex games. <laughs> I don't. Yeah, not oh. really sex games, but with naked woman. I was like, what is this? Tits, tits, <laughs> tits. tits. I'm gonna play this. Right. <laughs> I don't know. But, but, I have yeah. I have a memory of that exact website with or, or a different one, but the same kind of uh, concept. There was a website that we. Like kids who used to play games, and yeah. then if you typed one letter incorrect, you would end up at a porn site. Oh. That is what happened with me. Oh, yes, I um, I cannot name porn sites because then the video is going to be taken down. But yeah, I added one letter accidentally, pressed enter, and there I was staring at the screen where there was a threesome happening, a gangbang kind of construction. Very, very graphic, very visual, very... Into your face. Yes. 
<sighs> Did you start by watching porn or was it something that developed later on? I didn't really watch porn, but I uh, there was a site where you where there were, was uh, where there were stories, so you can just read it. And I don't know. I always went there and okay, visualize it and right just did my thing. <laughs> cool. So how old were you when you when you when you when you, when you first got your first sex toy? I was in my relationship, so I was nineteen. Oh, yeah, you are a late bloomer. Yeah, but also I did my first time sex was when I was one week nineteen. Okay, so that's interesting. Yeah, why do you think that was? Was there a particular reason? Because I was really insecure and nobody liked me. I yeah. I think there were definitely a lot of guys who were into you, but because like because of insecurity, I think you don't see it. Mm, yeah, probably. I didn't see it at all, <laughs> either. Like at all, so I can relate to that. Um, do you feel like because you've always been a big girl like you said yourself how do you feel like that impacted your sex life uh, being bigger yeah now I'm not really uh, annoyed by it but in the beginning I was like oh yeah you're the bigger girl and uh, I had uh, two really pretty skinny best friends and I was always a big girl and always on the background mm. because yeah they get the intention so that's very traumatic yeah uh, yeah it is so actually with sex I kind of do like that I have a lot of girls mm-hmm. uh, because I do too <laughs> 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 because I really like my ass before oh. there was even a man involved <laughs> in the situation okay so she's always been like I'm really flexible and I you know I know how to how to ride a dick real good and so I was always like teach me so you know we were drunk already and yeah. you know we're just girlfriends having honest conversations we we have these conversations all the time but then in dutch and while looking ugly (laughs) yeah (laughs) mostly um and so we you yeah we sat down on my bed and uh, we were practicing for a little bit yeah yeah you should book a class on how to write a dick with this woman because she she will teach you good she will teach you good (laughs) i actually really like uh, sitting on top you have stamina. You can last. Yeah, I don't know how. <laughs> I can't go to, to the gym, but I can't fuck for hours. Hey, I mean, that's a workout. Yeah, yeah. It is. It really is. It's such yeah. a good replacement for cardio. And also really flexible, so you can just bend me all the, w- all the way you want. <laughs> she can, like, pick her leg up, and it will be just... Yeah, okay. She'll be standing on one. On one of them. Yeah, I can and that's the it. <laughs> it's insane. I don't know. But I feel like this is something a lot of big girls and is like bigger people yeah, in general. They're really flexible. Yes. I don't know why. I don't either. Can someone in the comments explain to me why that is? Because I'd love to know. We're going to be taking a real quick break. But before we do, can I get some backing vocals? Ooh. Slut Show Sex Position Twister. Your weekly dose of bedroom inspiration. Mmm. The Flexible Francie. Basically missionary, but then for people who are actually more flexible than I am. Especially good for making you coochie even more tight. All you can eat. I mean, the title uh, says it all. All you can eat. A fun way to introduce power play and perhaps being a little bit more submissive or dominant. Pounding papa. A wonderful way to feel the dick, even if it isn't that big. What is your favorite sex position? On top. And I think doggy. Small dick doggy? No, no not small dick. but Not humongous dick doggy? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, wait. What? Did you hear that? Is there a question? I think we have mail. We got mail. We got mail. So um, we got an actual question sent in. <laughs> not one that I made up. We have an actual question <laughs> sent in in particular for this episode which is um you're a bigger girl yourself how do you deal with that in the bedroom meaning uh my belly is in the way i don't know how to have sex they're struggling with how can the dick fit the puss yeah when i'm uh, laying on my back i just put my legs to the outside Mm. because uh it will take away a lot of the the to the outside Uh, just a spit like this (laughs) because i'm really flexible oh that's a good one because when it's up, it, yeah. there's a lot of uh, body here. And when you go outside, it, it makes a lot of space. And also, when I do doggy, uh, I just grab my ass and... You, 
you, how do you wh- how do you position your head you're you just, just laying on your face you just dive into the pillow <laughs> and then you grab your ass and open your ass so it, there's oh. uh, because i have a fat ass there's a lot of uh centimeters so yes. when you take it apart oh. you can go deeper it opens up open up the gate <laughs> open up the gate yeah. sesame open yeah and also okay. yeah doggy is a really nice uh thing to do when you're bigger because yeah your your belly is on uh, right you're laying on your belly do you have other positions for them to try maybe also in particular for people who struggle with vaginismus i think that's a very interesting one what makes everything open up wide actually being on top i really like okay. i always start by being on top because uh a good thing when you have v- vaginismus is uh you have the power in your hands. So you, you can start. You you have to say to the guy, okay, just chill. I'm gonna do my thing, mm-hmm. and I will say when you can take over. Uh, yeah, yeah. So then just sitting on top and uh, starting really slow, and it's actually really nice for the guy because it's mm-hmm. it's really sensitive. That's a really w- good way to start when you okay. have uh, vaginismus. Yeah, and always um, you bring in the dick. Don't let okay. the guy put it in because then you're scared for wh- what's going to come. Oh, okay. Grab it and uh, lead it to it. Okay. That's, that's a really, really nice, yeah, a really helpful thing. What other tips do you have for people who struggle with this themselves? It's really good to talk about it with your partner because then they know uh, what they have to do and uh, what they have to do when you're uh, getting triggered. Mm-hmm. So that's really important. And masturbate and get to know your own body train it because i also had the diluters uh for mm-hmm. physio uh, get comfortable with your body and that really works for uh, would you recommend people to get a vibrator or something yeah 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 because it relaxes the muscles and you're not really uh in your mind when, when you're playing with a vibrator so. right you're alone. I think it's important to create a very safe space when you're alone. You can lock the door. You know, there's nobody gonna who's gonna storm in. You know that your vibrators are charged because you don't wanna oh, have them drop so dead when <laughs> oh when you're about to climax. Yeah, practice with yourself. I think yeah. that's that's a good one. I remember that I was very 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 scared of giving my first blowjob, and I practiced on a cucumber. Uh, I lied about this for many years, so here I am admitting it. Yes. <laughs> so there there was that. <laughs> yeah, so practicing on a cucumber when you're going to suck duck, dick or practicing with a vibrator when you're yeah. scared of having... And also practice, practice with a, a dildo just to get used to the feeling of a bigger d- uh, thing in your vagina. Right, right. And also finger yourself. Yeah. Like explore how everything feels. Mm-hmm. Uh, know that virginity is a social construct and not an actual thing fuck this ambulance fuck it so much die somewhere else okay, no, that was <laughs> sorry i was really fucking great ah! <laughs> I've been in this the bitch just goes die somewhere else <laughs> fuck no what is the sluttiest thing you've ever done <laughs> um well threesome with you Ooh, um, i love that i'm in the top yeah, I think having sex in, in in the showers that she gets with the person next to us <laughs> also having sex because the girl's like high five and just put my hand out of the <laughs> <laughs> No way! <laughs> we gave her high five. That's hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god. And we also f- also have had sex on really really weird place. <laughs> Tell me all about it. I want to hear it. Uh, well, the, the um the showers on sea gets uh, in the at a beach in France, <laughs> and I was s- sitting on top, <laughs> looking at the the sunset and just chilling. And I looked to my right, and there was a guy standing there, like, "Oh, what the fuck!" And I was like, "No!" <laughs> you were on top of him, naked. No, not naked. I I don't know, but I just, I it was <laughs> obvious that you were fucking him. Yeah, oh, I w- w- went down with my head, but I I uh, dropped my head in the sand, so. <laughs> it was really fucked up and also in uh, an alleyway in the train what well, not sex but a hand job with people sitting in the no it's, it's that's a bad one <laughs> well no i love it i love it it's a slut show we love this shit here yeah yeah but it was really it was a lot <laughs> yeah uh at this work i 
when love there was a work party. Sex. Work sex is good. In bushes. <laughs> in That's good too. On a in a, in Ooh, a rooftop, a, a rooftop terrace. Up, yeah. Oh. Um. I have way more, but I don't... Oh, in a sauna. In a public sauna. <laughs> <laughs> That's oh. really nice, but, but you have to... Did you know that there's actual sex saunas? Yeah. They exist. You want to go there? It'd be fun, though. <gasps> Let me get back to you about this in season six. <laughs> Let's no, do it. it. Honestly, oh. it's a very good idea. This is... It's not... It's Why have we never thought of this know. before? Oh, this actually be really fun oh. yeah yes okay yeah. that's it yeah. um yes, that's, it. <laughs> that's that have you ever tied up a guy yeah tell me all about that but not uh not to the bed or something just okay. tied up the hands and also uh blindfold. Blank, yeah blindfold and i really that's really fun because then you can really tease them and right. um, so what do you like doing when they're all tied up can't do shit don't see shit um just kissing the roof everywhere and uh then giving a blowjob and then go on top and mm-hmm. yeah basically. surprise him with different kinds yeah. of things I touch him on different places so it's for him a guessing game where you're gonna touch him right yeah that's awesome what would you recommend people uh if they're gonna if they're mm-hmm. getting started with kings if they're getting into bdsm how can you start that consent is the most important thing and uh talk with your partner about their fantasies what they really want to try uh what they're not comfortable with and just figure out what you want to do and uh when you're doing it check in if, if they're still fine and then just tweeting and right enjoy it yeah Do, because i know that you like i used to hate spanking because i was abused as a kid um but now i'm getting into it a little more i should have a conversation with my current bad partner about this though um <laughs> but i know that you like it pretty rough yeah and i was <laughs> <laughs> i have a whip and um i know i know that she likes it rough so like we've been friends for a long time now and so I was like, you know, I'm going to use this whip because I, I asked, are you okay with me whipping you? And so I started, you know, a little soft. And then at one point I went full out and she... Yeah. You liked it? Yeah. <laughs> See, I don't she, know why I don't have the whip. You were also surprised about it. I was so surprised to hear that you don't have a whip. Should we go to a sex shop tomorrow? Let's go to a sex shop tomorrow. Yes. So that's, that's settled then. Uh, she's going to get a whip. We're going to visit a sex dildo. sauna. She's going to get a new dildo. We're going to spank up our sex lives. <laughs> How? Because I've heard you talk about face slapping. Yeah. Okay, tell me about that. Uh, I didn't know I liked it. But um, the guy I've, I'm uh, having sex with right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, it, first of all, <laughs> sex is 10 out of 10. He just <laughs> he makes me come like three, four times every time. <laughs> I'm so <laughs> jealous. Yeah, but he's also really, uh, really sweet for me, and his dick is. Checking. It just works. Yeah. So um, I was laying on my back, and he was doing his thing, and uh, he choked me, <laughs> and then I was he looked at me and uh, slapped me in my face, but really soft, not like bam. Right. But it it, it did I liked something. It, and it did something. So yeah, that's that's the thing right now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Because I've seen Owen Gray do this shit, and oh. honestly, like, I would love to, you know, um, oh. sign up as a, uh, yeah, he can come fuck me. Yeah. Honestly. Same. He, yeah. Do some with him. <laughs> oh, that oh. would be fun. Can we set this up somehow? Okay, so if you guys would like to see an Owen Gray slut show collaboration with <laughs> Jess Key Funkin, <laughs> then uh, we can arrange that. <laughs> Look at us gliding off the couch. <laughs> Shit, get a slippery over here. <laughs> what is your favorite sex toy? If you would have to pick one that you're gonna last with for the rest of your life, um, this is a, d- a terrible scenario. I know. Y- yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> uh, it would be the satisfier or the wand. They are both so different because the satisfier is just right on the spot, really uh, does its job. Yeah, and fast and really intense. But the wand is also really nice. It it uh, simulates the whole cl- uh, clit uh, because it also 
runs in the right on the labia yeah nice so that's also really nice the more i watch owen gray porn he uses a wand often and i watch yeah. that shit and i'm like i need one I because this shit's that. Wow! Well, yeah, look at us going. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite uh, sex toy? Um, how many do you have? How many do I have? I have a the dildo that I accidentally kicked my uh, window in with. Then I have a satisfier, a womanizer. Um, does the whip count as a sex toy? Yeah. Okay, a whip. Um, a bullet vibrator, a uh, rabbit vibrator. I think that's it. What is your personal experience with slut shaming? Well, actually, uh, I do experience it, experience it uh, because I live in a small village and there is only one pub you can go to. And I have had my time when I was really enjoying myself and all the guys over there. But now they're like, oh, yeah, you're Jeske. Uh, yeah, I know you. And it's like, that's kind of annoying but i'm like yeah wait why can guys have sex with everyone uh, and they're just a guy and when a girl has has sex with everyone they're a slut I'm fuck slut shaming yeah it's really annoying when did you learn about feminism how old were you i knew about it but i wasn't really um informed about it and all the stuff because um, i don't know but you uh taught me a lot about it so now oh, I'm thank you <laughs> you're my teacher thank you <laughs> yes. so yeah that. yeah basically that Awesome. Yeah. I feel like mm -hmm. I've been, as many people around me say, you are radicalizing. You're in your own pink bubble and that is not the truth and not the reality. And I'm like, yes, I'm radicalizing. And yes, I'm in my literal pink bubble, but I'm enjoying it here. And the reality should be like this. So uh, how did we meet? Now that's just, I'd love to end with that. Totally like the other way around, but. Yeah. Okay. We, uh, I went to Seaget with like a 10 people, 11 people, well, a lot of people. And we went by train. So there's a train going from uh, Amersfoort to Budapest. And we were sitting there just chilling and- 24 hour train, right? Yeah, 24 hours, yeah. And you're sitting in a small uh, compartment. <laughs> you're in a little hook here. But there uh, is a place for six people in one. And we were with, we were at seven because two uh, yes. were in the other one and we were with five in our yeah. thingy. So there has to be another person, and that was you. That was me, and there's actually we. This is hilarious because I had yeah, Sophie on the show. Us. I accidentally filmed like their whole crew of people they they went with before yeah. I even met them. Yeah. And um, I have that footage. I'll insert it right now. See, that's the footage <laughs> of. Yeah, I think you're you're like walking around with your camera because someone was taking a picture of you while I was filming, yeah, filming no, that. Yeah, I don't know, but or you were sitting on the ground or something, but yeah. right, something like that. Um, and um then we met you have to live with each other for 24 hours so it worked <laughs> yeah so but you were uh going all by yourself to see it so yeah then we just took you in the family and right. you just stand with us uh at the festival and yeah weird shit happens oh i was eating chicken nuggets uh, today and i was thinking about that. <laughs> honestly i think that was was that your drunkest night up until our threesome no. Oh, no. I wasn't even that drunk then. You weren't? No. Was it me who was that fucked you up? Were fucked okay, up. it was me who was that fucked up. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Well, that was fun. It's a big blur of yeah. sex, drugs, alcohol, dancing, um, the, shitting. The moment you came out of your tent and you were like, okay, uh, that one guy just. Uh, went down on me and <laughs> on my period <laughs> and he been as ongesteld as a kersenvlaag <laughs> <laughs> oh my god I, oh, yeah. I tend to say shit that can be very um, like we say in Dutch dating plot yeah. <laughs> um, very graphic. very slur, graphic yeah. very slur-ish I swear a lot when I speak Dutch um, Same. yeah um, yeah so yeah it was a wild ride literally yeah yeah it was a lot of fun though. it was so much fun <laughs> i'm so glad we met on that crazy train ride i'm so glad i had you in the studio oh, um it was so good to talk to you about all these kinds of things because i feel like it's so important for people to also know that vaginism is not something to be ashamed of it's no. it happens and you got to deal with it mm-hmm 
what is something that you would say to your younger self if you could have a conversation with her in particular about the vaginismus? First of all, um, leave your ex earlier. A good thing is to go to a sex, uh, sexu sexologist. sexologist and just talk with people about it. Because a lot of people don't know what it is, so mm -hmm. inform people about it and don't care that much. Just chill and do your thing and do what you're uh, feeling good about. Guys, congrats on those lessons. I'm so glad that you're learning to explore and enjoy because mm -hmm. sex can be so enjoyable. And yeah. for those at home who struggle with vaginismus, I've even been there myself. So like it can really happen, happen to anyone and it's yeah. not something to be ashamed of. And you can fix it. Thank you so much for being here, obviously. <laughs> thank, you <for> me. <laughs> uh, thank you at home for tuning in. Next week, I will be back. And then you'll be seeing this. Anti-climax. Yeah, so there's no preview of next week's episode, but that will make it all the better when you see it, doesn't it? Right, back to the studio. If you want to read the information from Slutty Science, again, head over to my website, which is theslutshow.org. Yes, orgasm, theslutshow.org, <laughs> where you are also now able to get your hands on my five-piece postcard collection dedicated to destroying patriarchy and empowering you all. <laughs> Um, if you would like to support the slut show in another way, you can head over to my Patreon page and buy me a coffee, which is only four euros a month. And by doing so, you support both me and the team behind the camera tremendously. Follow me on Instagram at the slut show with Ellen Moore. And obviously I will plug all your socials in the link in the description. Um, send in all of your questions at the slut show with Ellen Moore Instagram, uh, because we would love to answer them on the show. Season 5 is going to be awesome, so don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe so you know, get season 5 in your inbox, obviously. Share the slideshow with your friends because that is the biggest thing you can help me with. I would really appreciate that. Again, thank you so much for being here. And for now, sluts out. <laughs> yeah.